Digital technology is increasingly intertwined with everyday life. From schooling and education to health and well-being to administration and political engagement, it has transformed the ways in which we interact, relate to others and access information. It now also offers new means for citizens to contribute to shaping political debate and drive real-world change. Petition forms, e-voting and other online tools expand opportunities to directly participate in civil society action and in democratic processes more broadly. I am Evitiori and you are listening to Communicating Democracy, the Europecom podcast on public communication. Today I'm joined by Kato Waterloos, who is postdoc at KU Leuven and Ghent University. Her main research interests include different aspects in the interaction between new media and citizens, civic and political participation, including political socialization, news consumption, civic media literacies and social media uses. Kato, thank you for joining us on this podcast. Thank you. So, can digital technologies create a citizen-powered democracy with people having a more direct influence on democratic processes? That's it's a broad question, I think, but it's I think in general we are like beginning to see that there are a lot of possibilities for digital technologies and like specifically um thinking about like what social media can do, uh, but also implementing digital technologies from top down on uh, from different levels of government um, to engage citizens in different processes of policy making. So I would say in general, there are a lot of possibilities um, and a lot of advantages, a lot of potential. Um, okay, but yeah. what kind of possibilities are we talking about? Are we more interested in like top down participation or the other way around? Actually, like, I think it's important to consider both. Uh, also, from a policymaking perspective, it's very important to consider both because both are occurring. Uh, looking at the bottom-up um, perspective, I think, and this is actually like my main area of interest, mm -hmm. um, looking at social movements, how people outside of the sphere of governmental politics and institutional politics actually um, express themselves on certain topics or actually um yeah express certain grievances that they have mm -hmm. uh thinking about black lives matter me too so many of social movements actually are relying very heavily on social media are just yeah. they have just become a large part of how people choose to take action how people communicate also inform themselves mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a place where people gather to take initiative could, could i say that is that correct yeah I, i think so and it's also quite logical that it's happening because um yeah the digital sphere and again social media are a place where a lot of people get their information mm -hmm. on a very large variety of topics so it's easier to actually get informed and quickly act on that same information and also um connect to like-minded people so it's it's yeah it's just how i think political action is happening today And would you say that this has already uh, a limitation because, you know, social media is mostly consumed and used by the young generation. But what about the older generation? Do you think they're a bit more limited in like uh, participation? Oh, in that sense, maybe it is. So it's it's clear that for like looking at research uh, on that. So younger generations are the ones who are relying most heavily on social media for their information and for their participation. That's clear. Um, for older generations, there's, yeah, there is a gap there um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of, but they are usually getting informed just in other ways and yeah. their participation just also takes other forms. So it is something to be aware of, I think. Um, and yeah, it would be interesting to look at how can we bridge those generations and bridge those different ways of being informed, uh, acting on certain issues. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing that uh, pops in my head right now is that 
Yeah, okay. Uh, the youth is the one that actually dominates the world of social media, I would say. But the youth is the one who also abstains from policy making on local and national level. Do you think there are uh, more tools or better ways to engage uh, the younger generation regarding uh, the local policy making? Yeah, I, th I think that's actually so that's the main issue, right? And it, also thinking about the general discourse about young people, um, we often and I think from a policy making perspective, we often assume that they are disengaged, not interested. But again, looking at research and also having conversations with young people, they are actually often very motivated, very interested in a lot of different issues, but it's different than uh, party politics, institutional yeah. politics. So I think there is clearly a gap there um, and it's a big challenge to, to bridge that gap. So to make institutional politics relevant for young people. Um, that's, a, that's a tricky, a tricky question. Yeah, How do you do that? Yeah, I think for me, I think it's uh, because for young people, it's political participation is very issue based, right? So um, they're interested in very specific things, things yeah, that are niche. relevant, yeah, 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 relevant to them, their life world, uh, their daily habits. So I think it's it's also like a communication challenge, right? How can we explain that policy making also is relevant? to their life world. And I think if we can connect those, then it will become more easy to to engage young people in traditional policy processes. Mm. So that that's where it comes when what you said that the uh, policy make no, the use of social media should be done by uh, top, top bottom. Um, do you think that policymakers could use social media in a certain way that can they can make politics more digestible for the younger generation then. I think there are a lot of possibilities, but at the same time, I think it's tricky mm. because first of all, um, bottom up participation and bottom up expression also has its merits, right? Usually it is used as a way to counter yeah. institutional processes. So I don't think we should really try to go there as much as possible from a policymaking perspective. Mm. But what is important, I think, is that policymakers actually acknowledge the trends that are occurring there, that they acknowledge that young people are using these platforms as a way to express themselves and also pick up these signals mm. and at the same time send out signals to young people that they are being heard and that their forms of action are relevant and that they that policymakers actually want to do something with that. And then then it becomes a question of, okay, how do we translate that in actual engagement in policymaking? Yeah. And then I believe, yeah, meeting them where they are, mm -hmm. um, using, like not going into too much fancy technology, but they are using their smartphones, they yeah, are yeah. using mobile applications. Um, should we do it on social media platforms? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Because actually, um, I did some interviews with young people last year and a lot of the times they said, no, my social media is for entertainment, entertainment and also for their own stuff. Right. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. want it to be a very formal thing. Mm -hmm. um, they want to be able to choose why they use Instagram. If they want to use Instagram to express themselves on a political issue, then they want to do that. But it's not supposed to be like invaded from yeah, top yeah. down. So they want a, to have the, the the option of them choosing the channel that they consume. Exactly. News or politics, let's put yeah. it like that. It's, a, it's an agency question, right? So I, yeah. I, oftentimes I think it's necessary to set up an, a separate space for participation, but one that does not challenge them too much in terms of adopting different technologies or does not really... Uh, yeah, counter their day-to-day -day habits. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky, yeah, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And based on your expertise and your research, What would you say are the challenges that citizens are facing mostly regarding the use of digital technologies? From a citizen perspective? Yeah. Huh. I think actually um, it's tricky there a lot. Um, I think it's often 
it's not a question about the digital technologies in itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and also again, like I think policymakers should really look beyond why are they not adopting this app or why are they not using this platform that we made for them? Because I think a lot of the times it's actually like a motivation issue or a knowledge issue or an interest issue. Um, if young people, for instance, if they do not trust um, political institutions or if they do not feel like politicians want to hear what they have to say, then mm. it doesn't really matter if you use an app. Yeah, no. Uh, or if you invite them to go to, I don't know, the European Parliament. Yeah. Um, Those so are I, just the medium, but uh, yeah. the message is the most important. Yeah, and the, the the links that people make and the, the, yeah, so that's not different. So I think for for citizens, I think that's something that we need to detect what's, what's, what's actually happening there, uh, like in terms of the sentiments that people have towards politics mm -hmm. and the gap between what people think politics is and what policy makers actually want people to think politics is. So that's a... So how do you simplify that? Uh, what has your research shown? In terms of those gaps? Yeah. I think for young people, it's it's clear that, that, that there is a, a large difference, right? So institutional politics and party politics is often not as relevant to them. Uh, for young people... It's very important to be flexible, first of all, um, to to have a personal choice, to to speak out on a certain topic, and also to have the choice to um, to to pick and choose from a variety of types of participation. But often these are outside of institutional politics. So yeah. for young people, again, um, yeah, participation is something that's occurring outside the institutional sphere. So. Um, And also, again, like the the meaning of what politics is is is, is just different. It's it's um, for young people. I think they they mostly think about engagement. Yeah. And 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 yeah, think about certain issues. Uh, but politics is something that's that's happening on a different level. Yeah. Or, or on an institutional mostly level. Yeah, very formal and very yeah. rigid and it doesn't it actually clashes with the way a lot of people want to participate or would want to express their voice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's 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 just that like expressing your voice, having an opinion um and being informed, but it it clashes with a lot of of the ways things are functioning formally. Mm. And what would you want uh policymakers and the young generation to to be the main take takeouts from this uh, from this episode. Yeah, that's tough. I think from for policymakers, I think it's super important to just keep like listening to mm -hmm. citizens, like actually listening, how would they want to participate? How are they ac actually already participating? Maybe just in ways that we are not detecting. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Um, like the, the things that are occurring on social media are so important to detect because I think oftentimes um, these are like the social movements that start out on social media are often social me movements that connect a lot of uh people that already have the feeling that they are not being heard or yeah, already yeah. have the feeling that it doesn't really matter whether they participate in the institutional sphere or not and that's why they turn to alternatives so i think it's important to to pick up um what's happening there and but if, it also i think has to do a lot with the um, the simplicity of just going on social media and sharing your experience or you know trying to make your voice heard yeah it's low threshold so yeah. i think the if if we would want to translate that into actual formal policy making and 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 uh have people like uh yeah cross that bridge towards formal policy making i think we should adopt a lot of the characteristics what make the, or that make social media um as low threshold as they are Um, and also like looking at ways to implement digital tools 
that also foster um, like central characteristics of why people would want to participate, foster trust, foster mm. clear, accessible information, um, yeah. give people feedback, what is being done with their input. So these are like very straightforward things in a way. And uh, there's being done a lot of research on this. This has, People are have been acknowledging, acknowledging this for a long time, yeah. but still it's tricky. Uh, is that a, a component that is missing from... I would say so. Like a lot of... <laughs> And it's it's a it's a problem because a lot of the initiatives that are taken from uh, from top down are done with the best intentions, and it's usually a thing of okay, we're limited in resources, limited in time. So I totally understand, but it's a pity because a lot of things are happening. I think parallel next to each other, mm -hmm. and we could actually learn a lot from why are things failing? Why are we, why are we not reaching the people we want to reach? Um, so I think looking at more specific groups that we know we are not reaching and, and building tools from their perspective yeah. would help. Not using tools that would fit the broadest category of people mm -hmm. um, or attract the broadest category of people, but ac actually tailoring it to the needs of specific people. Mm -hmm. And any concluding thoughts? That it's a tricky field to be in, like also from like a research perspective, it's I think it's it's super interesting that you are like connecting a lot of different views and visions. Yeah. Um, I I think the only solution is to like keep talking to each other, right? People doing like scientific research on this, but also policymakers and and citizens, the ones we would want to have on board, just have conversations on this and keep informing each other about what we want and what we need and I, I think it, at one point we will we will get there <laughs> we'll meet somewhere yeah yeah perfect thank you very much for joining us yeah thank you thank you very much Kato for sharing your insights on citizens empowerment and to our listeners we hope you enjoyed this episode of communicating democracy and if you want to discover more about the link between democracy and technology check out our Europe Com podcast series and of course, if you like this episode, feel free to share it with your network. Thank you very much for tuning in and until next time. This is a podcast series of the European Committee of the Regions. For more information on Europecom, please visit the website core.europa.eu.